shirt, paper to dry. I'm going to talk about my easel. Anybody ever seen a little easel like this? At Christmas time, Arts or um, Aaron Brothers has this set, a whole set where you get it. You get all your watercolors. You get a couple sheets of paper, and you get this easel. Of course, the paper and the paints are bad. <laughs> Give them to the grandkids. But I like the little easel. For ten dollars, that's what the kit costs. I give the uh, pigments to the grandkids, but I do like the easel. Yeah. We'll get to this one later. As you can see, that one's. I need to work on this eye and I need to bring those eyes to life, and I need a few more darks, but in order to get to this stage, then I can get to this stage from this stage. So when you get to this stage in your uh, painting, I find many people kind of lose courage. They don't know where to go. They can't see the end. Well, I can't see the end either. But I have faith that I'm going to get there if I just keep painting. So it's going to be all right in the end. If it's not all right, it's not the end. Did you see the movie? Yes. <laughs> the Best Marigold Hotel? Uh, I use that a lot in, in art because I think so many times, again, you get to this point, you've got the paper wet, you're kind of on the right track. I have a little oozel right here in his chin. I could lift that if I wanted to. but. I have some of the skin color going into the shirt. Maybe there's reflective light there. Um, I think the painting kind of takes a life of its own at this point, and I'm happy with that. But I brought these to show you. These are just midway of my granddaughter, Claire. She's over there with the peace sign hat. She just loves the peace sign. This is a, one of the finished ones. I've demoed this several times, I think, Anaheim Art, Art Association. I noticed today that the neck is wrong. This neck should really come in here, and I have not corrected that. So even though this painting looks like it's fairly finished, it's not quite finished, but again, the coolness uh, near her eyes, the warm in her cheeks, the cool down here where the chin turns away. Very limited palette. This is halfway through the same drawing, the same idea. This eye is pretty much finished. This eye, of course, not finished. This is pretty much the same stage that you saw me do with the, uh, the first wash. This is a different paper. This is pretty heavy paper. I think this is 200 pound. Saunders Waterford paper. Uh, I was painting exclusively with that for some time. Uh, but I do encourage oozles and happy accidents. I don't worry about that. In the final painting, if I didn't like something, I know I could lift it. Again, that's just another halfway through. And the reason why I show you these steps is because you need to go through this. It's like halfway getting to the Grand Canyon and you can't see the Grand Canyon, right? But you know if you just stay on the path, you stay on the road, you will get there. <coughs> so don't be afraid to get this part done. Be halfway there. This is the photograph that inspired all these paintings of Claire. She's now a teenager. She was maybe five or six when, that, when this photo was taken. Ted Nuttall, anybody heard of Ted Nuttall? He does the big sloppy dots in his paintings. So I studied with him for a little bit and found that I did like doing the big sloppy dots. <coughs> it's a nice way of unifying your work. The portrait of Tony, my mouth painter, has a lot of sloppy dots in it. But pretty much, I think he's the only one. Okay, back to Sam. Okay, I see this part here is very dark. This is light, so that's pretty well established. 
but there's a dark all the way through here. I need to get this dark. Back to the mother color and a round brush. Paper's dry. Scoop the paint, get a lot of paint. Yes, yeah, white eyebrows, so I'm going to try to go around that. In your work, you should have hard edges, soft edges, lost edges, and found edges. Edges are important. Now, in order to soften this edge, the brush is damp, not wet, it's damp. Soften that edge. Where his neck meets the shirt, that will be a hard edge. The ears are usually dark and transparent. Very red, the ears, very red. You guys awake? Yeah. Okay. When I demo for the fair, I, I usually do big white flowers. And in the fair, of course, the Orange County Fair, it's in the summertime, so it's usually quite hot. And the ladies are pretty much the ones that want to see the artist, how they do it. The guys are just along mostly for, uh, you know, just to keep the ladies company when they come to the fair. So, and I stand usually when I demo for the fair, and I, my back is to the audience, but I can turn around and see them. And a lot of times the guys fall asleep. It's kind of like in church, you know? Oh, you finally sit down, you finally, it's hot. And it's nice and cool inside where I am demonstrating, so many times uh, I find that the guys are sleeping. But I've never heard anybody snore, so. <laughs> It's any consolation, I, I know the feeling. Now for his ear, I want to get, even though the black and white is not giving me the information about color, remember I'm, I'm painting from this. I made a blow up at uh, the Kinko's at the copy store. And I think on the back of this there might be a, yeah, here's a smaller version of it over here. So the photograph is giving me very limited information, very limited, but I know that ears are warm. Permanent red. This company, uh, Mission Gold Watercolors, they don't have a CAD red, but they have a permanent red. Interestingly enough, I think cadmium, the word cadmium is not being used anymore, probably because Cadmium's not good for you. I saw Ted Nuttall uh, demonstrate portraiture from a photo, and he uses a big Goliath brush, a huge brush, like a size 30. And he would put the brush in his mouth. He would actually rinse it in the water and then put the brush in his mouth and kind of suck the water out of it. Oh. Yes. And we said, wait, that's toxic. And he said, I know, I like the taste of cat red. But guys, don't do that, of course. That is not a good thing. So I hope Ted Nuttall, he, he lives in Arizona. I hope he's not doing that anymore. I was, it builds up in your system. Yeah, it's, 
you know, it's bad enough that we are exposed to all kinds of toxic things and we never know for sure what we uh, are being exposed to half the time. Okay, the bottom lip is lighter, uh, but on this side of his lip, right here, this is dark. The light uh, on this photograph is coming from this side. So I can safely put this edge of the lip in the dark category. Where the chin turns under, this part of the chin, and the under part of the nose, even though you don't see it in the photograph, put a little cool there. That just helps to uh, turn, turn the chin under or turn the nose, bottom of the nose under. Just a little coolness right there. A little coolness down here. It's very subtle. Can you see how subtle that is? It's hardly not even there. But just those little marks make a big difference. Same color, same mother color. I'm not adding any other colors to this, going back to the same color. But because there's an under layer, it looks darker, of course. It's building up of the layers. In order to get the lights, you must show the darks. Value does all the work. Color gets the credit. Okay, he has a real strong dark. The edges of the lips, the sides of the mouth, are the darkest darks, right here, and right here will be very dark. The top lip would be darker if I could see it. Um, his mustache kind of comes over his lip, so I really can't see it very well, but if we could, it would be darker. And even a man's lips would be a little more crimson. So alizarin crimson would be a good color for the mouth. Alizarin crimson mixed with the mother color. Try to use as few brush strokes as possible. Try to do a painting where you're actually counting the brush strokes. Limit your brush strokes to, let's say, of course, a portrait like this, you need a few more. But if you were doing something small, try to limit your brush strokes. Try to do a painting, let's say, in 50 minutes, and then try to do the same painting in 25 minutes. And then try to do the same painting in 10 minutes. Which one's fresher, do you think? Ten minute one. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, don't labor over it. And don't be afraid if you've painted something once, paint it again. Paint it many times. You will be more familiar with it the more you paint it. Uh, whether it be portraits, uh, landscapes. There's a dark right here. That's dry enough. I can go ahead and get that eye in for you, my favorite part. So even though the whole painting is fairly still kind of soft edges, uh, nothing's really tied together yet, he does have some laugh lines that are some lines in his face that you can hardly see because the airbrushing is so well done. It took maybe 40 years off of him, but I know that he has lines here, lines here.